What is happening team? So last year I shot a Porsche 911 GT3 RS and the car was completely stationary. But wouldn't it be cool to have that same car going like a bat out of hell, just like in rolling car photography? Or create drifting sports car effects? Well, here's how using Photoshop and blur galleries like Path Blur and Spin Blur. Let's dive straight in. Here we have the raw file and I've done a touch of color grading and dodge and burn to get the image looking more attractive and we'll be looking to have the car moving along this trajectory. So the first thing we need to do is cut out the car using the pen tool. I'll start down on the bumper and work my way around. Now you could try the select subject or quick selection tool but I find once you've mastered the pen tool this is more accurate and you can be quite quick. Now you'll notice we have this complex spoiler to select and we can come back to this once the entire car is selected. Now don't worry too much about getting the underside accurate as the shadows will cover this up further into the process. Now we have the path closed, make the selection with a one pixel radius. Now we can head back to the spoiler and using the pen tool as before, but this time choose subtract from selection. And then the same with these two gaps. And now we have a good selection of the car. We're going to save the selection by going up to the Select tab and Save Selection. Call this whatever you like. I'll call it My Car because I wish it was. Now we're simply going to copy and paste using Control C and then Control V to paste onto a new layer. Now we're going to make two more copies for later in the process. And we could just turn these off for now. Select the layer we've just been working on and load that My Car selection we've just saved. Now we can make the car disappear using the content aware fill. But the preview window shows a pretty poor job and I think it's because we left the shadow underneath the car. So let's cancel that and include the shadow using the lasso tool, which might help with the content aware fill. And we can see Photoshop has done a much better job. It's not perfect, but it doesn't need to be. Click OK and Control D to deselect. Now if we turn back on the cutout car layer, we now have the car minus the shadow, which we'll deal with in a minute. Using the clone stamp tool, I'm just going to tidy up some of the areas along the outline of the car. Bring back the fence and trees, etc. Next we need to stamp down the background and the fill layer onto one layer with Control, Alt, Shift and E. Now here's where it gets exciting. We'll head up to Filter, Blur Gallery and Path Blur. And this loads up the default left to right motion blur as we can see from the control points and arrows in the middle. Now the great thing about path blur is that you can tell Photoshop to blur the action along multiple lines rather than just one straight line. I'll just turn off edit blur shapes for the moment but we'll come back to this. And we can create more speed along these paths using the speed slider. Now this is quite a CPU intensive process as you can see from the progress window here. But we can help out Photoshop by taking all of the speed away for now. So firstly, let's take the left control point and place it where the converging lines of the road meet, or the vanishing point. Right here in the middle is good. And we'll follow the line along the center of the road using the other control point. Then we can start to add multiple lines along the converging lines of the road, along the grass verge here, another along the very edge of the image, and then the more lines we add, the more accurate the path blur will be as it forces the pixels to follow these paths when we eventually turn back on the speed slider. Now you would think that that is where we finish adding the path lines, but we actually have to continue all the way around because if this was a tunnel, those converging lines would continue along the ceiling. Now one thing you will notice in real life is that objects far away move slower than objects closer to us. So this is where the edit blur shapes will refine the speed from left to right. We'll choose the end point from the middle path line and decrease the end point speed all the way to zero. Similarly, we can increase the speed at the points closer to us. Around 290 should be good. Then repeat the process for the remaining paths. Now for the big reveal, and of course the processor will need a little time to render the changes. Then we can commit the changes once we're happy. So here's the before and after. 
great realistic motion blur now in this scene, but there's a problem. We're missing the shadow from underneath the car as you can see from the original picture, and there would be spinning wheels if this car were moving fast down the road. So let's tidy up our layers, and the first cutout car we can rename to base car. The next layer will be for the front wheel, and the final layer will be for the rear wheel. So underneath the car base layer, let's add a new blank layer and we'll call this shadow. Now in order for us to see the original shadow of the car, we can turn off the path blurred layer we just created and with the brush tool, I'm going to sample the color of the road and make it slightly darker. And with the shadow layer selected and a soft edge brush, we can paint lines along the original shadow. To create perfectly straight lines, use the shift key and dab dots. Now it's a little hard to see what we're doing, but we can refine this in a second. Now if we turn off everything but the shadow layer, we can see what we've missed and simply fill in the gaps. Convert this layer to a smart object, and then we can add a touch of Gaussian blur to soften the shadow as it looks a little severe. 30 is too much. Around 26 looks good. Now to make the wheels spin, turn on the front wheel layer and head up to Filter, Blur Gallery and Spin Blur. Then position the circle over the front wheel using the control points. Also remember to de-feather the edges. And this looks good, but more speed is required. Let's try a blur angle of about 30 degrees. <laughs> and that looks mean. But if this were real life, we'd be able to see that front caliper. So create a layer mask and bring back the detail from the underneath base layer. And simply repeat the process for the back wheel. But now we've lost the spinning front wheel because this layer is covering it up. No problem, create an inverted layer mask using the Alt key and press the mask icon. Then paint back in the effect. Now that's looking pretty mean. So time for some final touches. Stamp down all of the layers to one layer with Control, Alt, Shift and E. Rename this to Stamp, convert it to a smart object and then we can open it in Camera Raw. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new brush selection and choose the road here. Doesn't need to be the entire road, just the foreground. And then add some texture at around 35 and clarity 10. A touch of overall saturation and onto the color grading to add some blacks to the shadows with a hint of blue and some whites into the highlights. And here's my finished edit, a realistic fast moving sports car using the pen tool, path blur and spin blur. Another way you can use the path tool to create images like drifting sports cars is by following the same steps as before, cutting out the car using the pen tool, filling in the area using the content aware fill, applying a path blur like before, but this time using the center control point to create a curved path. Once again, multiple lines will help Photoshop to guide the pixels where you want them to go. And the end result will give you a mean looking drift image to add to your automotive portfolio. So there you have it, a couple of ways to spice up your automotive photography and create rolling shots just like the pros. And if you like sports car photography in general, there are a bunch of videos on my channel that you would probably enjoy, including the Porsche photo shoot. So that's it team, thanks for watching as always and click that like button if you enjoyed the video, that will really help to spread the joy and don't forget to subscribe as well for more juicy content. I'll leave you with a couple of juicy images from my previous car photo shoots. Enjoy.